good lad. Let's see if we can get him to do a little couple of feet. Good lad, Woody. Quite surprised that he's doing this. I really am, but there you go, it just goes to show you. I think you know it, but it all depends on what's going on in the hawk's head, whether he wants to do this or not. Just shut that hatch down there, and uh, he's just sitting there quite happily, like eating away. But I'm going to pick him up in a minute if there's no drama, pop him out on his perch, and remove this plastic front. So there he is on my fist. Take him out a little bit slowly. Nice sunny day, Woody. Let's pick up these little bits of feather. It'll allow the air to flow through better. Make sure the hook. He'll be able to see out nicely. That's it, so that's both bits of double glazy plastic and we're removed. Lift his hatch back up. Is it all a bit strange? Let's see if he'll have a pig at this. There you go, mate. Is that nice, Woody? Now we'll see out. He's got all the air blowing through nicely. It'd be a much better environment for him. I thought what I'd just talk about quickly is the way I trained my dogs up to work with the hawk. So for the last three years or three seasons, I've used a patterdell for flushing. Now the patterdells, um, I don't think they're the ideal dog to introduce to a hawk, but this hawk. He's known the Patterdale since he was 18 weeks old, more or less. So he's seen him from the Avery when he was a young, young hawk. And so he's had sort of almost three seasons with him. But this year we've got Bo. Come here, Bo. Come here, Bo. So this, this is Bo. He's the German wirehead pointer. The hawks worked with him for two months the end of last season and he's still in training he hadn't really done any healing or coming to the whistle so it was a slow process when I got Chewy Chewy was seven years old he was a rescue patterdell the lady that had him uh, she did love the dog and she'd had him for a little while I was his actual fourth owner um, due to various problems in people's lives he sort of got pushed around a little bit but the last lady um, she had some cats and he was basically attacking her cats so she couldn't have him and um, we saw the dog on Facebook and uh, I thought I'm going to give this dog a, a home and I'm going to not just give it a home I won't let it down whatever happens. We got the patted owl slowly but surely working with the hawk so the first process when you get your dog is getting the hawk used to the dog so for the hawk to get used to the dog it just take literally takes time the hawk, hawk's got to realize that the dog is not going to eat it so it's a bit of a slow process in the first few days but what i did after the hawk was happy with the dog running around the garden is get the hawk out with hood on and have the dog tethered on his lead so the dog can't get near the hawk and then I'll bring the hawk out with the hood on and just slowly introduce the hawk to the dog so the hawk hasn't really seen the dog because he's hooded we haven't got to worry about him baiting and then once I realize the dog's doing well then I'll put the hawk remove the hood of the hawk and let the hawk see the dog in the garden and then the next time I'll bring him out, I'll put him on the high perch and then bring the 
patterdale out and let the patterdale run around the garden so it's slowly seeing the dog that the dog's not going to be a threat to it um, because they see everything as a predator us as a predator until they get to know that um, we're not going to eat them and then the dog's not going to eat them so they put their trust in the dog and once they've done that then we take the hawk out and fly the hawk with the dog so what I'll do then is take the um, hawk somewhere where I know that he's not going to catch a rabbit and then the dog is going to surprise the hawk but he's just settling down because we haven't been in this weighing room for a little while and he is at fat weight so he's sort of working it all out really he's not totally comfortable he's got a bit of food here He's not going to eat that, but he will eat it when I take him outside in, in a minute, I'm sure, and put him on his perch. So as I say, we take them out where I can fly the hawk, and then I keep the patterdow, whatever dog I've got, on a short leash, and then fly the hawk from tree to tree, occasionally calling it to me glove with the dog on the leash. Once I, I can tell that dog is not going to jump up at the hawk, because when a hawk's come into your fist, it's different from the dog running around the garden and, and the hawk sitting on a perch. There's that prey reaction when a bird flies in, so you've got to be very careful. So the patterdale, very headstrong, extremely strong, high prey drive. So if there is a rabbit, that patterdale, he will, he will go straight into that, he will go straight into that rabbit and the situation then could be disastrous if I haven't gone through the, the other processes and got used to what the pat dow's doing. If we was in a situation where the, uh, the pat dow's gonna go straight in on that rabbit. But now the pat dow and the hawk get on so well that the hawk will allow the pat dow to feed whilst he's feeding on whatever he's caught. So with the um, German Wirehead Pointer, he was 10 months when I got him. And he was uh, basically bred for a working dog. He was been living in the kennel outside, hadn't really done any road work or any um, calling back or sitting or healing. Come up here, bud. Come on, come on. So this hawk, he does know this dog. He's not as comfortable with it as he is with the patterdale. What are you doing? All right, what are you up to? Just didn't want to get there, do you? Um, so we got him at 10 months old and I introduced him, bringing him out into the garden with a hawk in the aviary and let the hawk see the see Bo. He did scream quite heavily for a few days but once we'd done that then I brought the hawk out, put him on a high perch once he'd stopped screaming and then just let the dog walk around the garden on the lead and eventually off the lead. Once that was good same again I went out into a wooded area where I knew what are you doing? On a, I just flew him through the trees on a short leash calling the back occasionally and then once realised that they was all going to be okay and then we was away we went to somewhere where we would get a catch. What are you doing Bo? What are you up to? Come on. Honey, what are you up to? He's still a puppy, he's a year now but he's still um, doing all puppy stuff. But as you can see the hawk is okay and this hawk is at fat weight and uh, he's not really bothered about that. Also taking into account that we are out seven days a week so it's not it's not like we're out once a week and he's only seeing this dog now and again. It is a, um, a well bonded team even though he's only been doing it for a couple of months but he, he'll get better and better. I would say that if we'd have had Bo first and then got the pat down, it might have been a different story because I don't think this hawk 
would like the Patterdale steaming in on his catch the way he does. But because he's grown up with the Patterdale, he does allow him to feed off the same catch, which is probably quite unusual. You do see dogs and hawks together, but the way this, so he's had a nice little rouse there, quite comfortable. The way this dog, um, the way this hawk accepts these dogs, I think this is pretty good. You can get dogs and Harris hawks working together, but you just got to be patient and one step at a time really, but you can never ever trust the dog. This dog, if this hawk flies in front of it, I have seen it mount, go up and sort of mouth it, so you can't trust him. The patterdale, if he gets in on the prey, he might shake that prey, because that's what a patterdale does, it's killing instinct is to shake and if the hawk's on the end of it, well, the hawk will either let go or it get sort of put off the catch. With training dogs, they've got, they understand when you've trained them what no is and you can say no. But with a hawk, you can never say no. They don't know what no is, you can't tell them off. So you can only ever work to the boundary of the hawk's temperament. If the hawk doesn't like a dog, it might never never like a dog and might never trust you and the dog. But you just gotta read the, the hawk you have's temperament. I know what this one's like. Just got to read the, the hawk you have's temperament. I know what this one's like. He's getting a little twitchy now. He's going to have a little bait, and then he'll simmer down again. But remember, he is at fat weight. Most people will leave their hawks and not touch them at all. Come here. So this is Chewy. Uh, oh, we've got a bow up here and all. Come on, then up you get. We've got the full team here now. We've got the Harris Hawk, the German Wirehead Pointer. Stay then. I think he's going to get down and chew it the batter down. Oh, I don't know. What's going on, Bo? But that's what you can achieve, this sort of combination. Remember what I say, this Hawk is at fat weight and I think that's pretty good. He's getting a little twitchy now. He's going to have a little jump and then he'll set again. All right, mate, calm down. That's it. And then he'll settle down again. So just take your time, introduce them slowly. Never trust the dog. Never push your hawk past what it can go because the Harris hawk doesn't know what no is. You can't tell it off. But, um, Put a couple of clips on the end of the dogs and the hawk and uh, although it's a little bit um what are you saying hey bo what are you saying so for the patterdale when we're working he has a little bell on him that little bell there they've just both been out now <clears throat> but if this patterdale's in the wood this hawk knows that he's going to be flushing food out so the hawk will follow the patterdale through the wood wherever the dog goes the hawk's just above him if i haven't got the dogs then the hawk's more lo loyal to myself unless the weight's down a little bit then he'd be a bit more loyal to me because he knows i've got food but if the weight is up a little bit he will follow this dog wherever it goes these two can sit next to each other no problem at all this German dog here, the new one, still working with him. He does recall now, he does sit, he's doing well, but he's going to be pointing, he's going to be flushing, Hawk's going to be catching, but that's it really. I know it's not, I haven't sort of gone too much in depth, but basically you can get dogs and Hawks working together. 
So we've got canine species, raptors, and upright walking, modern, gentle apes, all working as a team. Catching food for Woody. It's all about Woody. Catching what he needs to eat, and sometimes occasionally for our table, which is what falconry is, the cycle of training a hawk to catch your food. It's an ancient tradition. We're trying to keep going in the UK and around the world. So that's it from us till next week. Hope you enjoyed that little rabbit on about my dogs and the hawk during fat weight, during the molt, trying to entertain, get us through the molt. It seems so long. But what he's doing well, he's molting well. He's molted a few of his train. Uh, one deck, and uh, I don't know if you can see that, it's growing quite well there, new one coming through. It's best to, if you don't know your hawk and you can't handle it in this way, just leave it alone through the molt, let it molt out, you don't want to be damaged any feathers in the blood, but like I keep saying, I've kept this going, this is all Woody knows. So put him straight on that perch and instantly he starts eating. He just didn't eat off my fist in there just because it was just a little strange. And as I say, he is at fat weight so he's not particularly hungry. What I'll do is pop his hood on and that will save him baiting off my fist. If I don't have the hood on, as soon as I take the leash out, he'll ch try and jump off my fist to get back into his aviary. And then I've got to take the swivel off and then I've got to get the jesses out. But with the hood, he just sit on my fist until I've got all the equipment off and then I'll remove the hood and he can go. So whilst he's eating, I'll just take you around and show you how we're doing with the tail. That one's almost down. And this is one of his decks. Now there was an article uh, last year that I read and they said someone's been shooting darts birds of prey and they're taking a photograph of that which does look like a dart I must say if you didn't know it's not a dart it's a feather in the blood coming down this is what you need to be very careful of and that's why it's best to leave your hawk unless you know as I do that I can handle this hawk and I'm not going to do any damage and this hawk trusts me. If he was more unhappy or baiting around, I would, wouldn't do this at all. But with my hawk, I've done this for the last three molts, and this is his fourth one. Nice little rouse. Put your way then, Woody. So we're back in now with the hood on. As I say, he would bait off my fist, probably by now, if I hadn't have hooded him. At this fat weight, other than that, during the season is fine. But certainly pulling these chests out, he'd have, been a, he'd have been gone. So he's sitting very comfortably, as you can see. And then once I remove the hood, you can go and there's no bait in there that's the best way to do it and I'll just leave him now to find his bit of pigeon 